Um, I'm, I'm passionate also about technology and very interested and always have been. Um, two of the primal and most loved Greek myths are to do with the creation of mankind. It starts with the creation of the gods, what Hesiod calls the theogony, um, the, the birth of the gods. But then um, our champion, the titan Prometheus, made human beings in clay and you, the, the spit of Zeus and the breath of Athena gave them life. But Zeus refused to allow us to have fire. And, and the fire, I think, means both literal fire, to allow us to become Bronze Age man, mm -hmm. and to create weapons and to cook meat and to, to frighten the, the fierce animals and to, to become the strongest physically and technically, but also the internal fire of self-consciousness and creativity, the divine fire. And Zeus didn't want us to have it. And Prometheus stole fire from heaven, gave it to man, and Zeus was so angry that he punished Prometheus by chaining him to a mountainside, and he was immortal, Prometheus. Every day his liver was torn out by an eagle, and, and it grew back, and every day it was torn out again and for perpetuity until he was rescued by Heracles. Now, I, I mention this, and the other punishment hmm? <laughs> was that Zeus and the other gods created Pandora, the all-gifted, that is what Pandora, all-gifted, uh, and sent her down as the first woman. She had everything but he also gave her this jar which we sometimes call a box yeah. which actually was the mistake in translation of a very famous netherlandish intellectual called erasmus uh -huh. <laughs> who mistook the latin pithos and picos the two words and so he translated it as a box but it should actually be a jar um, but pandora came to earth if you remember and she was told that she would, shouldn't look into the jar and she was beautiful she had everything all the gifts of all the gods were given to her but she had this curiosity and she opened the jar, and I'm sure you all know the story, out flew hardship, lies, deceit, murder, pestilence, all the ills of the world, and the golden age was over. She slammed the lid back on, and one little fairy was left inside, Elpis, Hope. Now, that's fine. That seems like an interesting story. It's an interpretation. But actually, if you think about it at the present, firstly, the Prometheus story, as soon as mankind shook off the chains of religion and the church, we became incredibly interested in the Prometheus story because it suddenly said, we don't have to bow down and apologize to a god. Gods have to apologize to us for denying us our independence and our sense of ourselves and our fire. And so Shelley wrote Prometheus Unbound, the poem. Beethoven wrote a Prometheus Overture, all within five years of each other. The, the height of the Enlightenment, if you like, and the beginning of the Romantic era. Now, I'm going to put that to one side, right. but and I'm going to go back to 1989, when I became fascinated by this extraordinary new development in which you could network computers to a network of networks, which was starting to be called the Internet. There was no web. There was no graphical application, it was all text-based, but I was really excited by it. And as it grew, I became more and more excited. I thought this is the biggest and most exciting bringing together of human beings in the history of our planet. It is going to, it is the all-gifted. It will give us freedom of access to knowledge, we will share things, art, politics, boundaries will be dissolved, we will learn to love each other, we will all be brothers. Like in Beethoven's Ninth, you know, we will all be brothers. It would be fantastic. And social media came and the Arab Spring, and I thought there would be no more tribalism, no more hatred, no more racism. This would be wonderful. But what happened? The lid opened, and out came trolls, out came abusers, out came racists and tribalists and insulters and the worst kind of humanity. It was an exact replay of Pandora's box. And, and I thought that was so interesting that the Greeks had this understanding that when we have something that seems perfect, there is no possibility but that it also contains its opposite. And now, this is the ah, most important part. I'm sorry to... One more God, this, because you are my no, God. this is the huh? most important huh? part. Huh? I guarantee you, whether you like to think it or not, hmm? that although we know through Darwin and hmm? science and genes that we were not created by an intelligent designer, in a hundred years' time, we can guarantee 
there will be sapient creatures, sapient beings on this earth that have been intelligently designed. You can call them robots, you can call them compounds of augmented biology and artificial intelligence, but they will exist. The first person to live to 200 years old has already been born. The future is enormous. It's never been more existentially transformative. My question is this, when the Prometheus, who makes the first really impressive piece of robotic AI, like Frankenstein, but like Prometheus, back in the Greek myth, they will have a question. Do we give it fire? Do we give these creatures self-knowledge, self-consciousness, an autonomy that is greater than any other machine has ever had and will be similar to ours? In other words, shall we be Zeus and deny them fire because we're afraid of them, because they will destroy us? And the Greeks and the human beings did destroy the gods. They no longer needed them. And it is very possible we will create a race of sapient beings who will not need us. And will they be as imperfect as we are? Almost certainly, yes. I hope so. Yeah. yeah. But um, we will be redundant.